So you might now think, this young woman, she must be here because of the quota, talking after two such senior experts. I tell you, this is a great moment to talk about feminism. I'm a feminist with all my heart. I do research on it. I do advocacy work for it. And I do business with it. And I think there's one thing which is very particular about feminism. And this is a feeling. It's such a powerful feeling that once we've experienced it, we may often never ignore it again. And I think every feminist has a really personal, unique story to tell about the first time that they've experienced this feeling. And I often wonder whether I wasn't born a feminist or rather named one. And I want to take you now back to the day that I first experienced this feeling. So I still vividly remember little Eva sitting there in elementary school and listening to her teacher tell the story of how the world came to be as it is. This was the story about Adam and Eve. And in order to understand my story, you now need to, need, uh, need to know one thing. So Eva is the German and the Hebrew equivalent of what is Eve in English. So we call them Adam and Eva. And I will continue doing so now for the sake of my story. So Eva is sitting there in mandatory religious class and she usually doesn't really like this lesson very much. But today she is really attentive because she's listening to a story about Eva. And to little Eva sharing the name, this almost feels like listening to a story about herself. So she's listening to the story of how Eva was created out of the rib of Adam. And there's a pang of this feeling, because seriously, the rib? <laughs> then the story continues, and the teacher tells how Eva is deceived by the devil and steals his apple. Um, and she then convinces Adam to, to share it with her, and she consequently brings all the misfortune, all the evil, and all the suffering over the world and humankind. And she's consequently blamed for the sin until this day. So humanity is doomed because of one apple and because of one person, one woman, because of Eva. So to little Eva, this felt distinctly unfair. How could she, or for this, any, for this matter, any other woman, be singularly responsible for all the bad that was happening in the world? She experienced a feeling of great inequity, injustice, and unfairness. And this feeling never really left little Eva again. So she experienced it all the way growing up. She experienced it in school, when supposedly boys were better in math than girls. She experienced it in movies, when male heroes tended to rescue the rather frightened and stupid females. She experienced it in families, in businesses, in society, in politics everywhere. Eva had become a feminist. So in the beginning, feminism to me looked something like this. I felt disadvantaged because I was a girl. And I was right. I was disadvantaged in comparison with white boys living in Germany from middle class. But what I didn't feel so distinctly then was that I was also extremely privileged. Learning of this privilege, I thought maybe feminism looks something like this. But today I know feminism actually is for and about everyone, because it wants to bring equity to everyone. And as such, it overlaps with the goals of many other groups of people, like the queer community or people of color, that fight for the rights of marginalized people. Um, and what we see is that the current system, and let's call the elephant in the room, the patriarchy, this is an unjust system for everyone. And especially for those that are marginalized, but actually also for those at the top, so the privileged ones, the white, heterosexual, middle-class men. In this system, they must be strong. They must not cry. They must seek power and they must keep it. So we actually see that this system is unjust for everyone. And feminism has the power to unite us, to challenge and change this unjust system. It does so by asking questions. It questions who has power and who hasn't. 
and it tries to find the reasons behind those power imbalances and how to challenge and change them. You might now think, okay, fair enough, but wasn't this talk supposed to be about AI? It is, because what we see is that AI is actually perpetuating our unjust systems. It's translating the unjust an unjust analog world into the digital, and it's consequently widening the power imbalances in both. And we see this in numerous cases where AI has been discriminating against marginalized people. We'll now look at three of those cases. So who of you might want to apply to a big tech company like Google, Apple or Amazon? Okay, I see there's some interest in the room, and I also see some, some women interested. So how would you feel now if I told you that you might be filtered out because of your gender? So this is exactly what has happened with Amazon. They used an AI to screen CVs in recruiting, and they systematically filtered out women. Who of you is maybe wanting to apply to get a loan in the future, so maybe to start a business idea to fund a house or to fulfill any other dream. How would you feel now if I told you that you might be disadvantaged because of your skin color or because of your gender? So we see this happening with the Apple Card. Their system is very much biased against both females and people of color. So much so that women sometimes got only 5% of the credit limit of their spouses with whom they shared both income and credit score. Now who is maybe using your face to unlock your phone? So I'm doing this and it functions quite well for me, but I have a friend and she is originally from the Middle East and she can also unlock her sister's phone with her face and the other way around. And there are cases where this is even much more problematic. Innocent black men have been arrested in the US because of misclassification of face recognition systems in surveillance. They've been arrested and they have been accused to commit crimes they didn't do. They had to prove their innocence not to be convicted. So I'm sure you also feel that this is unbearable and this is the feeling I was talking about. So as a researcher, I want to do something about this. And I start by looking at the reasons. And I believe there are three main reasons. And these are data, people, and context. So firstly, the data. AI is trained on large data sets. Data sets with data from the past. And this also includes human decision making from the past. And also their biases and missing data. Now looking at the Amazon case, we see that they trained their system on their own data from the past. Now, Amazon is a tech company, and this unfortunately means they are mostly men. So they trained their system on data which incorporated mostly men, and consequently, their system learned that men are the better tech employees. And I brought a small example for you to show you how strange and biased data can be. So I was actually looking for photos of human beings for this talk, and I was looking on a free database for photos. So I typed in Mensch, which is the German equivalent of human being, and watch what happened. Well, what can I say? This is a great example for biased data. So somehow the system did not appear to have learned that pictures of women and children depict humans too. This shows the importance of how we label data because AI doesn't no, that these are pictures of human beings. It needs to be taught. And in this case, the teaching does not seem to have included sufficient diversity, or maybe none at all. Talking about diversity, this is not only important for data, but it's also really important for the people building those systems, the people making decisions upon those systems. So decisions could include, um, for what purpose are we using AI? Where does the budget go? And, um, and um, for what use cases are we using it? So the, dis the, the diversity of these people also informs the decisions of the AI. And currently, I see 
far much more diversity in this room than I see in the people creating AI. Looking at the apple cart, so what has happened here? They incorporated old biases against people of color who traditionally had less chance to get loans and thus also to repay them, which is true for women as well. And those biases were only detected by users once the systems was live. So I do wonder, can there have been sufficient diversity included in building those systems, in training them, in making decisions, and especially in testing them when those biases were not discovered before the system went live? Finally, the context is also really important because a system might function very well in one context, but very differently in another or it might be used to do good or to do evil. Think of the face recognition on the phone. So this might be really useful if it's functioning accurately. But it might also be used for very detrimental cases. So I'm thinking of the announcement of the Iranian police that they want to use face recognition systems in surveillance to detect, to identify, and to punish women which are not wearing the hijab or not wearing it properly. So in this case, AI is actively actually being used to enforce power and inequity over women. So what we currently see is that AI is it's rebuilding our own biases, our own prejudices, and our own power imbalances. It's like a mirror of our society. And moreover, AI has become a power in itself. And this power is very unequally divided, and it's functioning unjustly. Feminism has a history of dismantling and changing power. So why not use this for AI? Can AI become a driver of equity, justice, and diversity through feminism? There is great potential. Imagine if we combine the transformative power of feminism and the revolutionary force of AI. What could possibly stop us? So if we keep addressing the reasons, the data, the people and the context, if we keep including very diverse people, and if we keep building, creating new techniques and new tools, AI can empower equity. And I'm super optimistic about this because there is so much potential. I told you that AI is functioning like a mirror of our society. But this can also be an advantage, because as humans, we do not like to have biases. And we have a really hard time recognizing them in ourselves and also unlearning them. We are much better to detect them in others or in AI. So why not use this to actually see biases in ourselves and unlearn them? We can also use AI to empower the marginalized. We can use it to detect and report hate speech. We can use it to recruit based on potential rather than on past data. And we can use it to bring education to marginalized people. Finally, why are we using AI? We want to make better and more efficient decisions. But are we currently really making better decisions if we keep including our own biases and our own mistakes into those systems? I don't think so. But imagine how we could empower our businesses, our politics, and our society if the systems we were using would function justly and empower equity. So, fem uh, so AI could actually become the major driver for equity if we keep using this potential. AI is used everywhere. So imagine how the world could look like in only a small fraction of time if the systems we are using would function justly and empower equity. So ultimately, I believe we are at a turning point. AI can be the tool to widen the divide, to intensify injustice, and to push the analog world towards greater inequity. But it may also be the feminist tool to challenge and change power imbalances, both in the digital and in the analog world, and to create more equity with and in AI. We call this feminist AI. Feminist AI is a goal. It's a value construct, and it's the approach how to get there, to reach more equity with and in AI. And with this, we are currently at the very beginning. 
which also brings me back to the beginning of my talk. So little Eva, she felt this intense feeling of injustice and inequity. And I feel it still. But I'm also extremely optimistic because I really believe we can reach equity with AI. So to conclude, as Eva, I feel almost obliged to steal this apple and to challenge the system, but we cannot change the system alone. So join the change, raise awareness, include diversity and change the system. Thank you. <laughs>